Hi guys, Richard Retro here. I'm here with Good Key. Hello everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a pickups, my pickups video um, with my games. Obviously, Good Key has got his games with him, but he's got got some stories to tell. And um, we go to Blackpool this weekend, so yeah, there's quite a few to get through. So I like to thank everyone for liking and sharing. I haven't done a video for a while, mainly because I haven't done any pickups. I haven't done any pickups. Been to a few charity shops, and um, I went to go car booting it. But I'm either working or the rain, pissing out of rain. So yeah, so I haven't got much content the last few weeks. So thanks for liking and sharing and subbing. So first of all, we're going to um, play Expo in Blackpool. Um, I can't wait. Absolutely yeah. can't wait. It's um, Saturday and Sunday this weekend. Um, so hopefully this video will go up tomorrow night. I'm definitely on Friday. We're travelling up on Friday. We're getting up quite um, quite um, early. So we're, we're going to pop into Critical Mass in Exeter. Um, Bridgewater, there's insane games. A couple of collectible shops around there. And then straight up to meet Pete um, on a retro tip, tip, tip. So we'll be picking them up and then going up to Blackpool. I remember last year it was a nightmare. It took forever to get there. But luckily I was able to message Ross from um, Critical Mass. And he normally opens about 10, half 10. But he's going to open at 9 for us. So we, yeah. So we all done and dusted by 10 up to Bridgewater. And hopefully we'll be done by Bridgewater about 12 o'clock. I think last time it was like 1 or 2. When I pick up Pete, it was just the, the traffic was a nightmare. Everyone going north to the event. Um, south, yeah, north, south, south, north. Um, just because it's Friday night traffic. So, yeah. What have you been up to lately, Good King? What have uh, you been buying? Oh, what are you buying? He's <laughs> <laughs> also really gone, on, gone on eBay. Gone on eBay. Yeah, um, I've got all sorts. I've got a folder of 220 random Pokemon cards <laughs> for like 15 quid, which uh, I sort of was wondering whatever happened to my old cards, and then my little brother let it slip that when he was eight, he left them on a train, and he's kept that <laughs> secret for about 15 years. So, I've got a big folder of all sorts coming. And I'd like to learn how to play it because I never I used to collect them. I never used to play it. I used to collect them or hoard them. I see them at car boots. I pick them up. But I never learned mm. to play it. It was all all, all about magic. Mm. I played a bit of Yu-Gi-Oh, but that's about it. Yeah. Really, not into Pokemon cards, but I pick them up and used to trade them. Many of the guys liked them and that. Mm. I've got a game gear which I've got refurbished. So the sound and the picture have had uh, the um, they've had the components replaced that were notoriously bad. If you ever buy a second hand game gear. If it if the sound of the picture is any good, um, then you're lucky because the sound dies on all of them. To get what I in, in the car boot days to get one good game gear, I used to have to pick up four or five. <laughs> yeah. Every time, always four or five, and the screens used to be rubbish. But you got it from Amazon, didn't you? Yeah, and then I got, I sent it off to a guy. But oh, didn't you get your money back from Amazon when you messaged him? What yeah, you I got my mon I got my money back and I got it refurbished, so I kind of like win win there. Do you have to send it off back or anything? No, I just got a refund. Who said that? Well, you did it through Amazon, did you? Yeah, they just let me have a refund. Okay. You don't even send it back to them at all? They didn't ask for it to be sent back. <laughs> <laughs> just moan about it and they just gave you a refund. It is a refund, but you can still keep it. I don't know. Who did you get refurbished by? Because it was on the, the Sega Galaxy. It's James Bull and he's, uh, he's um, gear for games on eBay, but he repaired it in two or three days. Got it back on the post, the big parcel, um, the sound and the picture. I compared it to a game gear I found in the loft that the sound half works and the picture half works and it's ten times better so I'll probably end up sending that one to him if I don't trade it in. Um, but when but, you put it on Sega Galaxy wasn't it? You put World Arm or Fates yeah, I and, and tagged him and did you, you know it was on there? Or? Yeah, yeah. I knew it was on okay. Sega Galaxy but yeah. um, I, <clears throat> I'm using it as a mass system because as well because the mass system 2 doesn't have a sky output. <laughs> um, so I thought the easiest way, and that's why you somehow find a TV with an RF thing. I've got a mass, Master Gear Converter, so I've got a few mass, mass System games like Golden Axe Warrior and Sonic. Um, a black cable, you might be able to get some of the cables up there, mate. <coughs> yeah. We even go to some of the shops. If anyone knows why the Master System 2, and I suppose the Mega Drive 1 in that case, because they're the same lead, they never made a SCART for them that worked. It'd be interesting to know how they're not SCART compatible. But, um,. I've got some other random cable that goes in the back of the Mega Drive 1 and I think that might be SCART or is that, the, is that composite actually because that goes into my projector Yeah. so there's another little circle in the back Yeah. where you actually put or I think you can actually modify them I think yeah, you can actually modify mm. them so they are SCART or, or composite anyway we might see some mods up there anyway any other retro finds? Um, a few Final Fantasy bits again um, Find stuff in the loft, don't you, mate? Yeah, the loft's are, the loft's better. It's cheaper as well. <laughs> um, I still can't find my famous um, box, Pokemon Stadium Two, or or even of my two hundred sixty four. So they must be right at the back in the box. <laughs> if, if they've got accidentally thrown out or anything, I'm gonna be well annoyed. 
Lost on the train, mate. <laughs> Lost on a different mine. train. <laughs> brother, kill him now. <laughs> I remember once lost he, on the bus, mate. He, um, he lost a Pokemon game um, down the. He, he bent over in the bathroom and it came out of his hoodie pocket and it went in the toilet and it was ruined. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was gutting for him. Oh. <laughs> Typical thing, mate. Typical yeah. thing. That sums you up as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went to Plymouth yesterday and Richard went today and the only thing I got game related was a copy of Rise Star. Uh, for 20 quid. It doesn't have the book, but I thought 20 quid was a pretty good price considering I I would not want to pay anything close to 50 for it because I have got it on the Sega collection on the PS2. But just to have it on the Mega Drive in any state for a fairly good price yeah, we is good Yeah, we were went Plymouth yesterday, I went Plymouth today. Um, he said the lady in the market, the such, yeah. yeah. They've had a nice guys. Sega collector, like, sell... Probably about 100 games just come where, in. But they have a PS2 wall, which is kind of like maybe 8 foot like wide, and that is now a Mega Drive wall when yeah. it's like... I was literally was there yesterday and I was like, no, I've got Blackpool coming up. I was like, I could easily spend all my games money <laughs> this month in about 10 minutes, but I can't because I want to go back for and get loads of stuff. Luckily, the I had most of those I games. I one game. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I had most of those games, but there's a few that I actually needed, so I went up there. Um, I took some trades in. Um, yeah, I, lo I love trading my stuff in. It's just stuff that... So I would pick up the car boot and I remember trading, I think I traded in like an N64, I got 20 or 25 quid for it, which I could sell it for more, but I, I probably picked up for like three or four quid or like a job lot of, of games for like a tenner. But this is obviously when there's something local like that, you get some games in, you think, oh, I've got to go up there. And we are going obviously to Critical Mass. I do have my like another little like bag of trades for like Critical Mass. It's like, um, yeah. And also in, in Blackpool with the um, traders as well. And some of these games might be, I don't know, a bit more up there, so because the convention prices. But these are the games that I've like picked up. Um, I got um, Grandia 2 the other day on the Dreamcast. I've already got it. I was like, oh fuck, I've already got it. So I paid 26 quid for it, which is a really good deal. Um, I was able to take it back and um, sort of exchange it. And yeah, use that £26 trade in. And there's like nerds and sort of like the, the lady in the market. So they're sort of they're together, but they're sort of like separate. But I picked up, in the end, Skies of Arcadia. Um, they had £75 on it, which is well overpriced. But the box and everything's in good condition. I said, well, to be honest, I see them in shops all the time. But they're like, we see them in shops all the time. You, you never see them in the shops. And because I go to so many shops, <laughs> always looking online and everything, just stuff like that. In the end, I think it cost me about 52 quid, And then I used my £26 trade-in and I just paid the cash. So I was happy to pick this up. Yeah, I couldn't believe I didn't know I had Grandia too. Um, sort of the same, yeah, the same ladies in the market. Lovely women. Um, they got, yeah, lovely Mega Drive games. Um, Trade some stuff in. I think I knocked this off. I think I got this for either 40 or £45 pound in the end. So it was 50 quid. Um, maybe not all cash, but obviously I traded some stuff in. So happy. No, I think it was £40 pound I paid for this, actually. £40. Pound. So Shinobi 3, um, Return of the Ninja Master. Never played it. So It's the I, one after the Shinobi that everyone's played on Mega Games <laughs> 2, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I've seen screenshots of it. I think I it's on... I also get for like 60, 70 quid. I think so. it's on the Sega collection that I've got on the PS2, so I think I have played it. Um, one why game. it's worth 50 quid, I don't, I don't know, but... Yeah, I don't know even, mate. Never seen it. Hardly ever. It's seen like Castlevania. It. Never it? see it anywhere. So why is it worth so much? I see Castlevania more than like any sort of the rarish like game. It's not rare. It's just commands high price. <laughs> yeah. Get it. Um, I got Light Crusade. You got this the other day. You before? <laughs> yeah, about a month ago. Yeah, about in a month. the same place. When Rich was talking about trading something in, I noticed it in the cabinet for 20 quid. <laughs> they let me up for 18 and I was like, la la la, I got like Crusader. And then yesterday, they got the same game in, in a little bit better condition, and it's 15 quid. <laughs> and so it's happy. So we won in the end. <laughs> yeah. Which Retro always wins. <laughs> <laughs> Just a good king. <laughs> um, Road Rash 3, which I didn't actually have in my collection. So well happy to have this. Um... Yeah, no, ten pound. I thought it was a good deal actually. I don't want to sit for a bit more. It's, it's, I paid eighteen for it in the same place about <laughs> when I got my glasses in January. So they are you sure, be... mate? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> the only thing different prices... is I think I got the tag on the top, but that's not mega different. It's um quite a late Mega Drive game, nineteen ninety five. I remember um borrowing this from the uh, video machine in Bodmin um, <laughs> around the time when I borrowed Vector Man, FIFA ninety five, Sonic three. Um, I never liked it as much as Road Rush two. 
I still remember even playing it to be honest. And the graphics were a lot worse than Wave Rush 2 actually, but it has got really good music and um, it's still a fun game. Like, the, be the best thing about it is that when um, you annoy the police, instead of them just following you and like uh, truncheoning you, they get the helicopters after you <laughs> and like, then you know you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, sort of... it's a random fucking, I don't know, elephant. On the or the fan, so or the fan, so some shit game. I'm only guessing, but I assume that game is absolute garbage. <laughs> <laughs> is that Bruno, the baby Offy fan? Um, and is this is in a fix? Is this one that there's a Masterson version that's yeah. quite sought after? Yeah. Along with that, I stupid thinking, I am... French one. I think they're two. I did. Of the I did have. I did. I thought I had this one, so I always thought. Oh, I always used to pass it up, thinking I had it, but happy to get that one. And I think I had five pound left over trading, so I thought this is the worst film ever. So yeah. now I want to get Coffro Island as probably the worst game ever. Uh, One or two games. Was there a Mega Drive version, or was it only an American release? I don't know, mate. I don't think I've seen. This is also quite a late one. This is like ninety five, ninety six. Uh, the graphic... use in USA, Canada, and Mexico only. It probably work, and if not, I'm sure you can get a converter, or you've probably got a Genesis now, and you. Just a Retro Five, mate. Oh, do they play five. American imports? Yeah, today? yeah. Put the retro on five. Um, also, um, I've got probably about thirty to forty Game Boy like cases only, the manuals and everything, and I need like the Game Boy games, um, the stuff I picked over after over the last few years. Um, they're in my cabinet, just at the bottom, like hiding. I thought I'd get them out, take a photo, and I went up to the one shop, and most of the Game Boy games are like one ninety nine. So I was able to sort of complete these, and it's like King Kong, dreadful. Play as man. Play as Kong. <laughs> Fight for the life in a dangerous jungle on Skull Island. Why is the German um, translation of what says Spieler aus Jack, Spieler aus Kong? Like Jack Black's the name of the actor, not like the name of the character. I don't know, mate. Maybe Jack means man in German. <laughs> Let us know if Jack means man. <laughs> Spieler aus Kong. It's not mate, Donkey Kong, it, though, it, is it? I don't know, mate. Donkey Jack. <laughs> I don't know. Why did you get two monkey related games? Well? I don't know, they're just there, mate. They're there for one, one Battle night. Battle Survival Begins. Planet of the Apes. So I guess it's, it's the movie tie in. Like the modern one, the remake. Yeah, or which is rubbish. Oh, yeah, Century, 20th Century Fox, 2001. Matt Damon. Oh, so it's not even the new new Planet of the Apes, it's like the Tim Burton one. Yeah. Oh, God. The garbage worse. one. The absolute Matt trash Damon. one. <laughs> that one. They also had a couple of games. That's Mark Wahlberg, isn't it? Is it Mark Wahlberg? Yeah, I don't know. They fucking all look the same. Marky Mark. Mark Wahlberg. They all look the same, mate. Fucking hell. Can't even tell. Uh, okay, and then they picked up some more Game Boy carts, which were $1.99 each. Um, Chaos Black version of game. <laughs> because I thought, why not? Star Wars Trilogy, Apprentice of the Force. They got a few there, mate. I wouldn't mind buying a few more, actually. And this one is American Dragon, because all dragons are American, Jake Long. We were trying to figure out, because it says Disney, if it, it was a dragon be. out of like Mulan or something. I don't know, mate, he's got muscles. <laughs> I thought the dragon was supposed to be Eddie Murphy. <laughs> yeah, like a skinny little flying No, nah, mate, this guy's got muscles. Okay. And he's an American dragon, so he must have muscles. And the kid's got a skateboard. So it must be, it must be a kid's TV series. It ain't no Jungle Book, is it? It's <laughs> Disney have fallen far from grace. <laughs> Speaking of Disney, mate. <laughs> okay, there's a new board, board game release this, um, like, the last two or three weeks. It's called Star Wars Rebellion. And when you look at these board games, they now say, like, Disney on them. <sighs> I can't Star get used Wars. to seeing Disney, like, Disney Star Wars on, merchandise. Yeah, on board games as well. So this was, what, 70 quid? Um, basically, one side plays it's Rebels. The other Imperials. So it was just set in sort of like episode 5, sort of. Uh, well, it, it covers across literally like New Hope and onwards, mate. Yeah. It's just, it just yeah. Because yeah, obviously that's Hoth on the back. Just sort of like the average, I guess, board game. It's just like Risk, apart from the Rebels have got a base that they keep, keep secret, and the Imperials have to find the base, and the Imperials have to expand as much as possible, trying to uh, um, go to planets. If obviously if you land on a planet, they're like, is the base there? They're like, no, or yes. And you send up the little droids. The first couple of times we played it, we sort of like we got some of the rules wrong. So next time we sort of played it, we actually got the rules right, and it was sort of a completely different game. But this, you got you em Emperor Palpatine. It's well good. You can, there's a card called um, you can actually turn anybody. So I'm of like turn to the dark side. I think I turn Akbar. I think Akbar. It's a trap. I think it became Sif Akbar or something. I don't know. Or Lando Calrissian, one of the two. And then you, you sort of capture him with like Darth Vader. 
And then I think um, Han Solo like um, saved Chewie, or the other way around. I think yeah, I think Chewie saved. No, I think Chewie saved Lando Calrissian. But then I was because I was Darth Vader. I played a card that says like, if anyone's trying to like rescue or capture and it and it succeeds, you can capture the right that rescuer. So I sort of caught Chewie. <laughs> <laughs> so Chewie's like, oh. I tried to freeze him in Carbonite. It's well funny. Oh, it's like Carbonite card. Yeah, there was a Carbonite card. Thing is, you try and play it like like the actual films, you get absolutely destroyed. So there's some stuff you can be like Luke. Who's um? It's just a normal. It just says Luke Skywalker, and you can go to was it the Dagobah system? Play a card with Yoda, and then turn him into like Luke Skywalker the Jedi. But it yeah. takes so many turns and efforts, which you could have used like Luke Skywalker to move some of your troops or defend your troops or or do or do like missions. It just wasn't worth actually trying to get Luke Skywalker the Jedi. Yeah. And then you attach Yoda to him, and Yoda just makes you like re-roll a dice or an extra dice. But by then, you're absolutely destroyed. <laughs> yeah, really good game. I love it. It's massive. Like it's like four or five hour game. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely replaying that again. I'm well, slowly getting more board games. What else did I get? Clash of, you know, Clash of Cultures. Um, UK Games Expo in a couple of months' time as well. So, well, end of May. So, I mean, more board games. Yeah, I can't get used to Disney on anything, mate. Disney of all the Star Wars. I can't stuff. believe they own Star Wars and Marvel. It's just rinse and repeat, mate. Mm-hmm. Rinse and repeat. They're going to buy, I mean, can you imagine if they bought Nintendo or Sega or something? <laughs> it's becoming a monopoly. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, so I can't wait to UK, um, not UK Games Expo. I can't wait. I can't wait to UK Games Expo, but to play Expo this weekend. Um, there are some board game seats there as well, so. No, uh, a few beers late in the afternoon when I want to chill. Like, uh, Dark Clear, what it was called? Yeah. Uh, there's a lot yeah, of there. arcade games there, and they released the A to Z list. Yeah. Uh, ones, going but... back to like, obviously late 70s and Space Invaders, up to more modern stuff like 18 Wheeler and Daytona USA. I was a bit gutted that there's no Tekken, um, but... I don't think I've seen Tekken at the event. I've never seen like House of the Dead and stuff like that, so yeah. there's some new stuff that's been added, I think. But there is Super Hang On with the bike and... Um, yeah, that should be there with the actual bike as well. Yeah, and Space actual... Harrier, things like that. Um, the, the only other game that I really, really wanted was the Golden Axe Return of Death Adder that never got released on a home console from about 95, 96, which was should have came out on the Saturn, but they never put it out, because that <laughs> game looks absolutely crazy. If you If you... You, if you search on YouTube for video footage of it, you can carry the dwarf guy on your shoulders and you can attack one way, they attack the other, and there's like these things with yeah, no, like, streets arrows of rage. and it's like... Yeah, no, streets of rage, you know, bare knuckle. The other good thing I'm looking forward to is the artist, uh, I think called Duncan Gutteridge. He... Sonic artist. Yeah, he right? designed Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 box art. And a few of the other games that Sonic's good. Cookie can't wait to see like all uh, these all these guys. I don't really like to speak to them when I'm absolutely wrecked. Hey, you did Sonic cover art, I love your work, mate. Yeah, when or I was the a, guy who did Nightmare. Yeah. When I was about five or six I used to um copy the artwork from Sonic Two and draw it and all the art every time we were allowed to do art in um year one and year two in Bodmin and I used to drive my teacher <laughs> up the wall and he like banned me from drawing Sonic and um uh it's bad influence, mate. Yeah. The video games industry has turned you into a psycho, <laughs> mate. <laughs> I just find turn- I just find it odd that it was a British guy and um, not someone from Japan. And Rich said, uh, obviously at the time, uh, freelance artists probably offered like a hundred quid for like a one-off painting, no royalties on the million. Well, that's sort of like it's sort of like well, I guess when Sonic Two came out, it's sort of like the end of like the British sort of like gaming industry, really, with the Commodore sixty four, the Spectrums, yeah, the stuff like that is the height of its time, really. It's like the it, like the late eighties or early eighties or through the whole late eighties to be honest. Mm. And you had so many artists who just literally just took commission, and now you see them out there, obviously these retro men selling the artwork. I'm sure the guy from Nightmare was selling some of the original prints he sort of like just drew actually for 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 Nightmare. Is he, did he do Dragon's Lair as well? Or? Yeah, yeah, the um, he did, he did the, the, the PC. Well, there's loads of ports of it. Yeah, but yeah, the actual video game. So he did. He did loads of stuff. But I'm looking forward to Friday night. Um, I've got a little my bag of trades, so hopefully Friday night all the YouTubers will be up with each other, um, the regular guys. And yeah, we'll, we normally just get absolutely wrecked, have a good laugh. And yeah, and then Saturday's the main event. Um, probably get up nice and early, go to it. But yes, yeah, looking forward, just looking forward to seeing all the guys really. Um, I'm hoping it, hopefully the traders are good this year. Last year it was just, it was a, obviously it was three days last year, and some of the smaller traders can't really afford you know, probably hundreds of pounds for a table for like three days rather than just two. And because it's bank holiday, someone doesn't want to go home to spend time with their family. So hopefully the traders will be will be pretty good. Mm. It's weird because like, it's like one of the things that you don't know what you're after until you see it. Yeah. So I haven't got anything I desperately want because you can, if you search for it, you'll find it on Amazon or eBay or see it in a shop. Yeah. But if there's something there that 
oh, I haven't seen that, or, oh, I forgot about that game, and if it's a good price, then I'll get it. Um, I must be where you are at the moment, mate. I literally, like, in the old days, when I went in the Plymouth stop, shop today, I was going, I'd have spent 200 quid on all these games, because I literally were like, oh, I haven't seen them, I haven't seen them. Mm. <laughs> you literally where I was, like, 10 years ago, mate. Just, yeah, I'm 10 years behind But now, it's like, I'm slowly getting, like, slim pickings, like, just stuff like that. Everything's getting more expensive, and... Mm. I, managed, well, I forgot well, at the beginning of the video when Rich asked what stuff I got. Uh, today I managed to get for 27 quid. I got in there last minute on eBay. I uh, missed Quest Legends on the snares with the manual box and the map, which is a pretty good price. Um, then I, that's I was a looking, really good price. I was looking at the buy it now, and they were 40 quid without the map. Um, it's supposed to be not that good because it was basically made for the American market and it was called Fun Fancy Mystic Quest, uh, like a really easy RPG, and they resold it to Japan as Fun Fancy USA. And then obviously out of it you've got yeah, spin-off Game Boy games and that eventually became the Mana series. It's like a really complicated like series that they <laughs> got out of fancy. <laughs> Stupid like family tree of games. <laughs> um, but um Yeah, like I don't wanna like start collecting SNES games like that because they're so expensive, but if you can get the odd one at a good price. Um, Everything on eBay now just seems to be buy it now, buy it now, buy it now, and it's just doing it in. Absolutely do my head in. Years ago it used to be auctions for fun, but now mm. they, they would just buy it now. And you're like, oh god, that game, that game. I'm starting to think that eventually prices can't get much higher before people just refuse to collect, so I think they'll either stay where they are or just Mate, it's going to go up, mate. I remember doing a video saying how far retro arrives, and that's probably about four or five years ago, and we used to think, oh, are well, some of these games going to end up like, you see like um, the Spectrum and Commodore 64, like a set tapes thing, and you see them all the time, but it's just gone up and gone up and gone up. Mm. That's why I'm happy to pick up some of these games. Do you ever think that like, PS2 and, I mean, Xbox and 360, they, they, they're the games that have sold the most because they're such popular consoles. So there's literally millions of it. There are pretty much no rare PS2 games. Um, I mean, do you think there's that... A few late, there's a few late ones. There's still some of them for like 40, 50. I think quid, the most expensive like, PS2 out. game I've bought was Klonoa 2, which I paid like £18 for. Um, but, I mean, do you ever think like anyone who ever collect PS2 games like we collect... You know, Mega Drive there's a few, there's probably a few watching now who collect PS2 games. Um, it's probably quite a good thing to collect because there's so many to collect and you can get pretty much anything for like, from like 50, 50p only, to fiver yeah, most games. There's, only, there's like over 1500 of them. Every time I went to the car boot sale, I used to just, just pick up mm. PlayStation 2. I used to take the CEX, trade it in, get my money back, keep the games that I want and then when I'm like normally are. Normally, I would have been the last two or three weeks would have been carbon it, so I would have had a stack of PS2 games that probably would have paid 20p for. I could trade it into insane games, they give like 50p for. I think in last year I had a couple of FIFA games, I was I got two quid for some reason, like for like a shit FIFA game. Mm. I'm, ho I'm just hoping that insane games have got some good games. They're, normally, they're really cheap, they do they trade in anything, so lots of people go there, trade in all their trash, take all the good games, and sort of just left with stuff that people don't want. But luckily, they've got some board games there as well. Mm. The last couple of times, I picked up board games because. My trade is just uh, obviously I've got so much in the cabinet that I've got either the cabinets that they've already got. So maybe if you're there, if you have anything to buy, you can just use my credit note, or whatever, and well, then just give you the give give me some cash, or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. sounds good. Because there's always stuff like thinking, oh damn, if I didn't already have that already, I might get it. Or mm. but yeah, I just can't wait, can't wait. Did you get uh, what vinyl did you get? The oh other? yeah, um. It was Record Store Day last weekend, and I'm really like cynical about Record Store Day because um <laughs> yeah, right, good, right. You yeah they they post this list every year of like a thousand so releases, and and you go oh yeah oh yeah, and then you pick out like five or six things you might want. You can never get to a record store that actually sells them on the day, so there's no chance of you ever paying like the one ninety nine they sell them for. Um, <laughs> and then you're on eBay or on Amazon, and sort of like cry. I normally get three things a year because they're so expensive, and this year. I managed to get, I managed to get the Noel Gallagher one for a good price, fifteen quid. It's like a big picture disc with like Mexican flag on. Um, so are they like re-releases or they some of them are re-releases? So you'll get like repros. So of they're like, supposed to be one ninety nine from a vinyl shop. Yeah, basically. But people just see that the list on the list yeah. and just hike the prices off yeah. eBay and Amazon. Yeah, and then they just Back get typical. It's really annoying. But one of them was um, a Final Fantasy, um, Final Fantasy, Metal Gear Solid Five picture disc, Solid Snake on it. And it, the song on the picture disc is called Nuclear by Mike Oldfield, who's from the 70s. He did Tubular Bells, he did Exorcist music, and he's like a prog rock legend, if you're into that kind of thing. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a bit far out. But that song was used for the tr E3 trailer of Metal Sword 5 in 2014. It was picked by Hideo Kojima. Um, so this 7 inch is like that song with Metal Gear Solid artwork, and I managed to get that for something like um, £11. 
Um, one thing I want to get eventually is like Sega have been releasing all their classic games with soundtracks, so like Super Hang On, uh, Shinobi, uh, Streets of Rage, Street Rage 1 and 2. Um, they they sell for like 20, 30 quid, brand new, so they're quite pricey. But Shenmue they, as well, wasn't it? Yeah, that was, that Shenmue was the first one, yeah. Um, and another thing I found was a Final Fantasy, a limited edition Final Fantasy 8 double vinyl soundtrack. Fucking hell. Goes for like 40 quid, but it looks so good. Yeah. I um, think I've got the CD version, the double CD yeah, version. Yeah, I, I picked but... I picked up another soundtrack a couple of weeks ago. I was in a charity shop in Liscard, of all places, for ninety nine pence. Bastard. Metal Gear Solid, uh, one soundtrack, and then Richard informed me that it's got no barcode and they never sold it in shops. It comes in a double pack. It must go in that platinum uh, Metal Gear Solid platinum edition, yeah, which, which had the soundtrack and the T-shirt. The one like... that the memory card came with as well. Um, I think so. I'm not sure. I know. I'm a, I think the memory card was sold separate, but there is how memory much were they card. at the time when it came out? I'm not sure. I, I've, I always see the Metal Gear Solid memory cards quite a lot, so I think they must have sold, sold that on its own. Mm. But in the actual platinum pack of Metal Gear Solid, which could be 100 quid or 200 quid depending on condition. Yeah. Um, where you get the T-shirt. I think you obviously you got the the CD. I think there is the um, what's it called the memory card in it as well. I yeah. Think art cards and stuff like that. Mm. But. Yeah, I think the soundtrack was from that because if you yeah. like say it's got no barcode. Yeah, and when you look look it up, it's not got like a. It's not sold in H and V or anything, so it's obviously not like a. Should have asked if the platinum set was out back. Which <laughs> shop was it anyway? Uh, it was. I think it was a British Heart Foundation. Get a British Heart Foundation. They go in there the most, and they always ask them. They never got anything. Yeah. I it, never it, look at CDs though. It, it, it's weird because. There's another charity shop in this guy, I don't know, about two months ago, they, they're they selling all their kids' books for like 20 pence, and I just flick for a few just in case there was something. A uh, little mini Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask Guide from Nintendo Power Magazine f from 1998 or something. Yeah, that's cool. And it's like, I mean, it's probably not worth anything, maybe it's worth a fiver, but it's just a little, it's ideal to have it as a solution to the game, and it's just like. So there are I little, love these little things. I like the the official Nintendo magazines. Yeah. You used to get the little the little books, the little guides, and that. They um, they sort of give you a bit of information. Yeah. But not too much information. You sort of like read it and say, oh, I need to do this. But, but you sort of you use your brain rather than your proper in depth guide, which tell you mm, even how to walk. It shows there's still a few things that you can find in charity shops, um, rather than just tons and tons of copy of, I mean, Doctor Karajima's brain training as we discussed before. I uh, I went into some, some charity shops today. I took my GoPro with me, oh it was just painful, got nothing, nothing at all, it was killing me, absolutely killing me. One of them was shot for some reason, even though there's people walking around in there, I'm like, mm. whoa, bro, yeah. there must not be a sealed Zelda there for one pound on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of, um, I think there's a lot of people that are, I suppose maybe our age, that are collecting things that would possibly, uh, that's pretty loads they, of they probably like offer to, um, work in a charity shop, volunteer, and then when subs brought in they go, oh, we've got some vinyls here, oh, we've got some yeah. games here, oh, we've got some whatever here, oh, I'll just uh, give them a nominal donation for these, and they never get seen on the shop, so I think there's a lot of that going on. That's why you have to ask if there's anything out of back, because hopefully you get catch like a bag coming in, and there'll be like an old lady who'll be just pricing them up and stuff like that, and you can just go out back before the actual normal worker who doesn't yeah. go on eBay and, on, and online, and actually takes a moment himself. It used to happen in Game Station in Plymouth, there used to be a collector in there, anything retro came in, they would just take it, but you had that one day that someone's just trading some stuff in, and you'd be like, oh, I'll have that, or you literally just wait in the queue thinking, oh, I want those games. But you can't really offer them any money in the queue, or so you get kicked out, or sort of get them. So you thought, I'll take them straight away. I missed the, I missed the bog off by one, get one free, for 4 99 and mm. 9 99 When I was last in the loft, I found my copy of Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition on the Mega Drive that I bought on Game Station in about 2001 <laughs> and it's still got the sticker in the corner with the bog off and 4 99 <laughs> written in black marker pen and it's like I can't believe that was like a fiver and I would have got a free game so it's probably 2 50 like, <laughs> now that's like a tenner at least that game on a good day it's like the Final Fantasies I remember you just going yeah you just go in there and just buy Final Fantasies it used to be 4 99 buy one get one free and then yeah I just used, I've holded them for a bit and then I sold quite a lot of them online. I remember it must have been about 2007, Amazon just had loads of sealed um, 8s and 9s. They had loads of sealed ones, and they were, they were like 9.99 on there. And I must have brought about 30 of them. And then probably about a year later, I was selling them for like 
20, 30 quid each. But I realised I wish I wish I kept some now. Mm. <laughs> wish I kept some now because it'd be like 50, 60 quid. But Don't mention the art cards, the Final Fantasy 1 and 2. <laughs> <laughs> God damn good key. I clearly sold that at the convention, didn't I? I just thought, I'm just going to tell you, I figured I've got two copies of God damn Anthology. Anthology. <laughs> I just pick one out and just sell it at the convention. The one with the art cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm happy to pick up some random games. Shinobi should be fun. Or defense, fucking elephants. Are they elephants? I don't know. They look fucking. I think Artifacts was a German cartoon, a comic strip from the sixties. I might be wrong. Are they Nazis? <laughs> they look really frightening. I just noticed are they, that, are that, they, one's they, got, like, that one's got thumbs up, but it's his nose. How can he have a thumb nose? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, mate. <laughs> and on the back, isn't that just the Green Hill Zone from Sonic One with elephants? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ripped it off. <laughs> I don't know, mate. I don't know. It'll probably be like Tintin or something, but I don't know. <laughs> Road Ride 3. I can't wait to play that, actually. Like Crusade. Looks fucking hard. What do you believe, creators of Gunstar Heroes and Dynamite Hadley? Is it Hadley? Hadley? Dynamite Hadley, yeah. Gunstar <laughs> yeah. Heroes is Hadley. really good. I've seen Hadley for a while. Uh, he's like Trago now. He's a guy we, we work with. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of call him Badly. <laughs> How are you doing, Badly? Bad Hadley. <laughs> yeah, Hadley. <laughs> okay, Badly. cool, guys. So, yeah. Feel free to come say hi to us at the um, Play Expo. Um, I'll be at the bar half the time. I'll probably be running around like an idiot um, <laughs> trying to find the guy that did the Sonic artwork and yeah. crying. <laughs> Geek fan here. He'll be loving it. Good kitty's eyes will be popping out his head for fun, mate. But it should be fun. And there's lots of stories from last year which, are, which were hilarious. So hopefully there'll be more stories this year. And yeah, just looking forward to it. And look, looking forward to the road trip up there as well games up so hopefully I'm praying there's some good games and as a footnote we also booked off the Manchester dates in is it October or November October which is I think it's the same people we just it did some bigger, Manchester yeah bigger, bigger event so the, I don't know last few years it's been okay so I just enjoyed like the more like the YouTube meet up and that and normally mm. the road trip up there the best bit was a car boot the next day I absolutely loved the car boot so yeah they're sort of getting a bit bored of it because obviously it's in the same place all the time and you, yeah, just, there's no sort of like after after show or after party or whatever. It's because all like it's just like a big warehouse. But I, I enjoyed it last year. But Play Blackpool is definitely I think the best one to go to. You get the retro games, you get the the buy as well, and you get the you know the YouTubers and the drinks and the beers. <laughs> Too many oh, yeah. beers. Speaking of beers, they released a price list thing for the beers. Two pound fifty for a pint of Carlsberg mm. in our local in Liscard. It's three. 380, 380 in the barley, 310 in the ivy. They said Blackpool, just so when they release it, even like a burger, it's like add chips. Like, can I buy a, can I buy a pint and add, a, add chips for 50p? It's just so cheap there, you know. Like Manchester, it's like double the price of my. I remember like burgers were like seven, six, seven quid or something stupid, and pints were like four, four fifty or four quid. So it's just good. Yeah, it's just good. It's in like a hotel, um, hotel prices. So brilliant. Mm. Can't wait. No boxing this year, so <laughs> boxing was hilarious, absolutely hilarious. So there's so many stories from last time. But yeah, come say hello to us. We'll be geeking it up, and I'll be having too many beers. But yeah, cheers. Thanks, guys. Goodbye. <laughs> That's serious. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> You're gonna cut that off. Yeah. No, I'm gonna keep it in. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>